welcome back everybody to another CB Rifles podcast. Uh, this is actually the very first podcast that we're going to do in advance to the very first season one CB Rifles season. Uh, like last season was the kickstart season and this one is going to be the first official season where we have three divisions. It's the feudal division, the top division, followed by the rustic division and the play-in division. Um, they will all have eight teams, but the play-in division might have five or six depending on how many teams join up eventually. Um, by the time I actually release this podcast, you will know because uh, we're recording this in advance because I'm on a holiday for a few weeks before the tournament starts. So this is why uh, I don't have definite confirmation information, but it will be like I just said over the time. Um, aside from that, I'm CB. I'm organizing the CB Rifles tournament. And today with me, I've got a very special guest. Actually, it's Blake from Chocolate Paladins, the team captain. Um, I've been having a lot of funny conversations with him over the Discord chat. Uh, so I'm really happy that he's able to join me right now. Uh, Blake, welcome. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know if they're always funny, but because when we first start talking, mm -hmm. I was kind of pestering you like every day. I was like, yo, can you get us in the tournament, please? <laughs> we'll do anything. <laughs> um, yeah, eventually it did happen pretty quick. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, you were you were definitely right on my heels uh, until you finally yeah. were able to get in, and then you were really happy. So that was good. That was good to see. And then you actually made a pretty big splash, I would say, into in, into the tournament as well. Like you almost ended up top four, um, and had some really good games think, against the top team. I think right? the first game was probably the most controversial. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's also uh, the most slack I got. The most. <laughs> I, I, like, I usually like I watch the Twitch chat a little bit in the our games just to see what people thought. Mm -hmm. um, and that game was definitely a bit negative from the other <laughs> NA guys. They were unhappy. They're like, oh, this is why people look down on NA. Yeah, yeah. 15, pres 15 Berserkers. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, so for those who haven't watched that game, yeah. Yeah, just tell, tell us about what happened there. Yeah. Well, I was against Surf Slayer, the first team, and I was kind of new to this was my first tournament. so. I didn't know them that well. I only knew Jackie because uh, I spent a season in EU and I played with him. Yeah. But apart from that, I didn't really know anyone. I just heard they were the best at that time. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, well, if they're the best, <laughs> they're probably going to be the best at like, the, the meta stuff, the meta strats. So let's try something, just something they won't expect. And I think we sallied out on them at first with basically mostly infantry the first game yeah. and i think that went pretty well considering you know and then the obviously the attack uh like you were saying maybe people don't know but we tried mm -hmm. 15 berserkers on wall fort and it went about as expected yeah it it, it was interesting let's let's put it that way i uh, was actually 15 berserkers 15 armagers yeah. and 15 m pikes yeah it, it was like the <laughs> most crazy unit list you could ever ever see but yeah that was that was interesting um, it that it, it at least made you uh, stand out from the from most teams. So that was that was already a good start, I think, at least for me, because after that you've been improving. But it, it showed that you are not afraid to take risk. You're having fun with the game, um, which has probably also allowed you to to evolve yeah. over the season. I guess. Yeah. yeah. I, my thinking was it was always kind of a, of a fantasy of mine to do mm. fifteen berserkers and a sort of a competitive game. Yeah. But then I start realizing, you know, it's not just about my fun. It's about you know, there's 14 other guys that are mm -hmm. like trying hard, so I should try and do some more uh, meta strats in the future. Yeah, so. yeah, make it a bit more serious over time. Yes, yeah, exactly. All right, all right. That's okay. So we'll talk more about the serious part with the team and everything like that. Um, but first, I'd just like to talk about you personally. What what got you into Conqueror's Blade, and um, yeah, what do you like to do, to do all this? Um, it was actually a player that's on this team, uh, Jason West. Just one day, randomly, he was like. We we're looking for a new game because I've, I've known him for a long time hmm. and he just told me this game i said it doesn't look very good but it's called <laughs> conqueror's blade i'm not gonna bother downloading it but i was like i was feeling kind of i was like i was like whatever so i just downloaded it and i was like hey this is actually pretty good and we started going on i think yeah i think we spent like pretty much every single day since that day <laughs> <laughs> on we I, I just signed on conqueror's blade at least like for that day and this was like over a year ago, so yeah, insane. Yep, and actually, my very first duel, signing on in Total Virus as level one, was against Rip Cats, and um, a lot of you guys probably know him. And... Yeah, well-known player. Yeah. Yeah. So my first experience with a against a dual blade, 
perhaps influenced my choice in being a dual blade myself. So. Yeah, that might be. Yeah, so you are playing a dual blade right now in the team, which yeah. is, is, is pretty cool because there's not that many dual blades. That's, that's one. Um, is, is it your solo class? Or do you also play any, any others? Um, it's the only class I'd say I'm good enough at <laughs> uh, to play against these other guys. Um, also leadership as well. Yeah, that helps. Pretty yeah. important. Mm -hmm. But short sword's fine, but I'd say I'd say dual blade is really my only worthwhile class. Yeah, yeah that's funny. Yeah. yeah, it's nice. It's it, it's always good to see a, a good dual blade. Um, we know one of the best, Amya, for example, he got the most hero kills last season. Like, yeah, I was kind of expecting him to, to yeah. get that. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, you played against him as well? Yeah, you did, right? Uh, we've not fought. Oh, no, no, no. No, 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 no we haven't. No, no, different teams. Yep, we actually fought... Teams. We fought him actually on um, the YT's uh, the L Turban Struff tournament. Mm -hmm. He had like a little mini eight v eight. So nice. I played him against that, and it didn't go well for us. Yeah, <laughs> I imagine that. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna be sure I, I see that somewhere because yeah, he is insanely good. It's 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 insane what he can do on the dual blade. Um, but yeah, more about him later. Maybe one day he will join the podcast as well. Um, he didn't want to before, but maybe he'll soon do so soon. Yeah, he actually helps me a lot with tech support. If ever I have Ooh. a problem, or one of my friends has a problem. I mm -hmm. just make a group chat with Amia, and he does. He just sends all this text stuff. Nice, that's good. Go. Yep. Maybe I should start sending him some text as well. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> it might help. Yeah. Um, well, anyway, let's go more into the team uh, chocolate balance as well. Um, you are the team captain. Um, how, how, yep. What is chocolate paladins like? Chocolate paladins. I've tried to make it so no one blames anyone. That's the kind of environment I'd like. Just. Mm. Um, I don't see the point of you know, blaming other people for it because if you fuck up, like everyone knows you fucked up, so <laughs> there's no re no need to like, dwell on it and stuff. But um, surprisingly, I was kind of worried about losing because I thought, oh man, I because I, I maybe a lot of the EUs don't know the personalities on the team, mm -hmm. but a lot of them are from conflicting houses that pretty much they never talked to each other before because they're always enemies. Mm -hmm. So having a few of these names together although they're really good players i people didn't think they'd mesh but surprisingly there's no problems at all actually like everyone even if we lose you know they don't mind it's just kind of the losses just kind of roll off them so that did surprise me but it's obviously a great thing yeah definitely that's actually really interesting so uh, chocolate balance is, is a mesh of different houses you say that that also competed against each other then um for sure yeah I know from talking to to Brian, the other like mm -hmm. really big name for NA teams, um, he, he he talked to me about how he's trying to create this team that uh, like is it really plays as a team. It's not about the individual; it's more about the team. That's what he said for at least for Pont Guard. Do you recognize that what he's saying in, in your team as well? Um, Pont Guard, I'd say yeah, they're amazing together. Yeah. They have. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know why because I know all the players individually, mm -hmm. and they're all really good players, but it's just like they all sort of level up when they're playing together, mm -hmm. because, yeah, I, I'm not sure what it is exactly because mm -hmm. you know I've played, I've, I've seen them play a lot and we've scrummed each other pretty much every week I think, during the regular the first season. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I don't think we took a game off them to be honest. Yes. So. Or maybe once, but then that was it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So they are still the team to beat for you guys, at least in in the NA rivalry. Then. Yeah, I think. I, well, uh, for myself, <laughs> I'm gonna say the goal of chocolate is probably to be the number one NA team. I don't. Mm. That's you a, know, that's it's a it's a tall order. Statement. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's a tall order for sure. But yep. I think it's a worthwhile goal, and then it's like it's something, it's something to work towards. Yeah, it's definitely a a worthy goal considering that. Bonnegard is such a great team, and if you get like top one spot for NA, considering that Bonnegard is will still be there, of course, then yeah. you would also be contending for the first place in, 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 for example, the Super Rifles competition or any tournament, perhaps. Yeah, I think it's also good for them as well because they haven't really had any other team. Mm -hmm. Sort of, it's just been them pretty much. So I think to keep it fresh for them as well, like, uh, so if you're number one for too long, then it gets a bit stale. But mm -hmm. if you've got maybe a, someone that you have to keep an eye on, perhaps like you know they're getting better, so you have to keep improving yourself. Yeah, uh, definitely so. true. So then, so 
Right. For the next season, you won't get a chance to play Pondcart in the official games. You can, of course, scrim them, right? practice games. Um, you will be playing in a Rustic Division, for which I believe you're definitely one of the favorites. We will go into the tier list later this, in, in this podcast uh, for the Rustic Division. But I do believe you're one of the favorites for the Rustic Division to go into the Feudal Division the season after that. Um, and one of the other teams that is with you in the Rustic Division is Holy Crusaders, another NA team. How do you, um, what is your relationship with that team then? Uh, Holy Crusaders, they had a bit of a rebranding mm-hmm. during the second part of the season. And uh, I think definitely they improved a lot through that re- um, rebranding, but I still, I'm not sure. Um, just from the, I think we've had one or two scrims against them and it sort of feels like we're the pawn guard and they're the chocolate, you know? <clears throat> it kind of feels like the rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's still so a I, gap between, between each of you, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, that's not to say, like, they're bad or anything. But... Oh, yeah, well, uh, you could definitely say that you're better right now because um, you were fifth, yeah, you were fighting I for four to yeah, four, and yeah. uh, Holy Crusaders was second to last yeah, in the Yeah, because I don't, I don't yeah. think they're bad because mm-hmm. we actually had a scrim and Zell just streamed it on his Twitch channel. It's mm-hmm. probably on his VODs if anyone's interested. Yep. But um, it was pretty close, but obviously... Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I think it's just a teamwork thing. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, I think this, I think it is just a teamwork thing yeah. because uh, we have been trying that. That's like the one thing that we've been trying to practice on because we're all pretty comfortable with like on like one v one situations or small groups. But it's really the sort of the death balls and the and stuff. So that's like the that's like pretty much the only thing we are we're practicing. Yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. Um, and. I believe that what you're saying about the team play and playing together, I guess, like that's that's the whole thing that actually makes a team better than the other. Like you said, Pondcard just leveling up when they play together, and the teams at the bottom of the standings or the bottom of the tournaments, they just seem to not get the right like cooperation inside the, the battles, inside the fights. They just seem to not meld together that well. Yeah, Something there's a lot of um, yeah. I think that even us at sometimes we're very hesitant. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just about getting the ball going, uh, getting the momentum and keeping up with that sort of momentum mm-hmm. and not hanging back and oh, crap. If I do this, I might die, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> better not do it. But I think you just got to go in and just got to abandon all your fears of like that kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Stop hesitating and just go. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it kind of makes sense. Yeah. yeah, you definitely need your, your team to back you up as well when you go in for a crazy fight or you know, something else like that. Yeah. yeah, having a teammate is always looking for you, like um, to make sure you're, you know, you're not getting killed somewhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think it's also really good. Um, it's almost like uh, driving. You got to be aware of yourself, but also <laughs> everyone else around, you know, what's that crazy guy going to do? Yeah. Got to, yeah. He jumps off a wall, got to be ready to jump off a wall with him, you know? Yeah, exactly. But, um, yep. Yeah, that does make sense. That does make sense, I guess. Yeah. Um, so, one topic before we go into the tier list, and we can talk about so many other things, but one topic we definitely cannot miss is chocolate. Um, we've had a small discussion a bit about chocolate before we started the podcast, like officially. Um, yeah, I thought you were actually streaming it then. So. Ah, yeah, yeah. I guess I get, I get you would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, We'll talk about chocolate because we're going to have to, because I love chocolate and clearly you're a big fan of it as well. And, and I guess your team is also in a way. Um, so I, tell us about the chocolate. Well, actually, I I don't actually know the reason why we were called chocolate paladins, <laughs> <laughs> but I know something that I have adopted since uh, we created the team was if we win, then... I'll have like a chocolate cake <laughs> if we went on Sundays, then I'll get a chocolate cake. Um, I don't know if anyone else has similar practice, but I know I do. Nice. Um, so yeah, if, if we lose, then I get I get no cake. Oh, so sad. Yeah. So now your team is playing to get you chocolate cake. That's that's basically yeah, essentially that's yes yeah. yes yes. So if we win one season, maybe I'll. I'll put on, you know, some pants. Yeah, I was about to say, uh, if we do this in, in maybe 10 more weeks or something, and, and you guys yeah. have won every single round. It'll like be number one, I'll just have yeah. boxes of cakes oh behind me. God. Yeah. <laughs> Get those piles of boxes ready, yeah. 
That'd be, that'd be really fun. That'd be good. So, and then what's the type of chocolate? You mentioned milk chocolate before. Would yeah, you, it's going like to be a... silky smooth. Sort of. silky I think smooth, on the yeah. packet I buy actually says silky smooth. Silky smooth. I don't know right. if it is exactly <laughs> silky smooth, but milk chocolate. Yeah. Milk chocolate, silky smooth. Yeah. Uh, any sprinkles or special special like flavors you would like to add? No, I'm a pretty, uh, no, straightforward, you know, as good as it is. All right, all right, good, good. I like it. Does that say anything about your personality as well, then? Yeah, uh, well, I don't know, I guess. You know, so. <laughs> I guess it's open to interpretation. Yeah, I guess, yeah, uh, it definitely is. Yeah, that, that, that is also for sure. But yeah, all right, let's now go to the Turning into like that, my uh, psychology. Philosophy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Let's move away from this one. But okay. yeah, okay. Uh, for me, it's, it's definitely the, the pure chocolate, 70 to 80%. And I like a bit of lemon or like the, the fresh the fresh things like in wow. the inside yeah or maybe some orange as well i really like the orange with the chocolate yo i'm sorry i'm have to ban you from yeah? ever okay. All right. well, joining we'll chocolate wrap it up wrap it up <laughs> there's no there's no orange i'm afraid oh so sad yeah well for, for me there always is orange because i'm dutch we we we, we have to get the orange sauce in, in there somewhere so yeah it's it's just what happens when you're dutch yeah all right, uh, let's go on to the tier list because that's going to be way more interesting than chocolate for most people at least. Um, so I'll bring it up. Um, you've had some time to prepare whatever you wanted to prepare for um, for the tier list as well. And then we can just have a really nice conversation about Rustic Division for next season. Um, for those of you who don't know what teams are in there, I'll tell you in just a little bit. Um, the way that we're going to do this is with the following. We are going to talk about the teams in order and we will rank them according to our little list that we have here. And it says S tier, A tier, B tier, C tier and D tier. Now something that I agreed on for the feudal division and we will do the same, uh, Blake, it might screw up some of your plans, but uh, we will not be using the S tier because um, I actually believe that we cannot say for any team that they are S tier before we start the season. Um, unless you have some extremely good uh, arguments, we might put some one team in S tier, but... For a feudal? For the Rustic Division. Okay. Yeah, okay. for for feudal, you, you could probably definitely make an argument that Plebs, We Are Clowns is S tier because they won, they won the season and they clearly showed that they're the best. But for, mm -hmm. the, for the Rustic Division, I believe um, it's, it's a whole different story, at least. Maybe, mm -hmm. I think it is. Um, so we're just going to do that. Um, let me get this right as well. Yeah, all right, good to go. And then some more space there. Yeah, all right, good. So S tier, A tier, B tier, C tier, D tier, and we're going to ignore S tier. So we'll go A, B, C, D. Um, okay, okay. That's all good. Uh, so the teams that we've got for uh, the Rustic division, so the second division in the Sea Rifles competition, is are the following. We got Triarchy, Love and Devotion, Apes, a new team, Odin's Legion, Holy Crusaders, Chocolate Paladins, Baguette Munchers, and Kebabs. Also, two new teams, Kebabs and Baguette Munchers. Now, where do you want to kick off this tier list? I'll start with, uh, you know, I, before we got this stream started, I said, one thing I noticed when you said to make a list of these teams mm -hmm. was that our group is kind of like the the food group of things because we have chocolate, kebab, and baguettes. Uh, so I'm going to put all three of those in A tier. I think that's a. Ooh, you're okay. You're yeah. you're going fast. Okay, okay. So hey, I'll I'll just keep up with you. Okay, so you're saying kebabs. Yep. Chocolates. Yep. And then also you said. Uh, what was the other team that you said for for A tier? Baguette. Oh, baguette. baguette. Oh, interesting. Yep. Interesting. Okay. Um, I wasn't thinking about putting Baguette in A tier, so I wonder why you, you did I it. actually, well, it was because they're a food group. Ah, yeah, of course. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Oh, I so I don't know if, like in my Discord, your your face is frozen. So I don't know if that's oh, a oh, yeah, yeah. problem. That, that's all good. That's all good. It's still moving. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Okay. Fine. I'm all moving. Um, all right. All right. All right. Uh, let's see then. For... B tier, um, I'm going to put, 
you know, I would I would have put Odin's Legion and B tier if but I know that one of their players that I like a lot um left for Eden, I believe. So I'm gonna put them to C tier. Right, and that is? Um I'll put Triarchy, Holy Crusaders, Love and Devotion, in C tier. Okay, so Triarchy, Love and Devotion, and Holy Crusaders, and Holy Crusaders, into C tier. In C -tier. C -tier. Nice. And I think that leaves Apes for D tier, and I'm not. <clears throat> I, I don't know why, it's just the, you know, I think it's their name, because I, I don't know their players, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. So, hopefully, you know, they can, you know... They can improve. Prove or, themselves uh, in my Prove eyes. themselves by beating you in the very first yes, game they yes, play against yes, you. Yes, and, yes, yes. and show that you were totally wrong about putting them into detail. Yeah. yeah. Although, because you said S <clears> is, you know, off limits, it kind of makes me want to put something in S now. So I'm going to say, <laughs> if all the food groups, chocolate, kebab, and baguette combined, they'd be S tier, I think. For sure. Oh, really? Okay, okay. So you, for this to make sure, you've got nothing in B tier. Is that correct? Yes, it's kind of like the divide, you know? Yeah, so we want to divide the teams like really strongly. All right, so we're going to talk about this because um, uh, this is interesting. I like it. Um, all right, um, let's see. Uh, I actually got a kebab logo somewhere, so um, I'm going to put it in. But uh, let's start with, I guess, the three teams that you're very confident about, um, which are probably kebabs, chocolate, and baguette. Like, just tell me why. Wh why are those teams on the A tier for you? Um, and again, this is totally biased because you were with chocolate paladins. Um, but we're trying to well, make it like a, an argument and say, okay, why would these teams be realistically with what we know into the A tier? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think chocolate paladin has. A lot of good players, you know. I think individually, I, I'm not including myself in this, by the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some of them are like uh, probably the best. Uh, at least two are the best, I'd say, in pretty much the whole tournament. I don't know anyone that's better than them uh, in the whole tournament. So, and there's a there's a lot of them like that. But I think I can confidently say two that other people would also agree with. All um, right. Um, but similarly, when I was making this team, I was pretty much following sort of death matchers. So, because I feel like teamwork can come eventually over mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. but you know, you can play like for you like level 5000 and still not be very good at your class, and like for whatever reason, maybe you just you know, you just like to play casually and or whatnot. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely took an eye out for, for death matches and hopefully that'll pay off at some point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll know, um, we'll know. Just have to make sure that there's no units left at the end of the fight every single yeah, game. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. You'll definitely yeah. win it. Yeah. All right. That's good. So, so and for kebab, yep. or sorry, what were you saying? Oh yeah. So, so for chocolate paladins, you, you put them in A tier because, um, well, at least my argument for definitely also putting chocolate paladins in A tier is because you guys were fifth in the strongest pool from last season and also uh, you were actually able to compete against teams like Playmay, La Alias, um, Jack the Ultras, they, they've all been talking like positively about you. Clearly Pondguard is still like way like leaks above you um, but at least you're scrimming against them and it's, it's been showing that you guys have been improving a lot. So I agree with you I would also put you in A tier for, for the Rustic Division. Then what, what about Kebabs? Because I know that they are a really strong team. They have really strong players. They have been getting players from Blame Elias, Eden, um, Love and Devotion. So there's plenty of tournament players here. And they will, are also going to compete in the CBL Asia division. So they are really looking to improve. They definitely want to go into the Fuel division. So why do you put them there as well? Then? My reason for putting Kebab in A tier was pretty much because uh, I had spent one season on EU. Um, I think it was season eight and mm -hmm. I was in house with a couple of them and just from what I knew of them at the time I don't think they would play with players that are not very good <laughs> mm -hmm. so I think um, 
uh, just based off that, they're probably got a lot of. Good, I think it's probably going to be similar to like Chocolate Paladin. Like they've got a good a lot of good individual players, and they all change their name, I guess, to match themselves. So maybe they have got, also got the teamwork going. Um, <laughs> True. So I'm going to say that's my reason, and also because yeah, as I said. They're one of the food teams. I gotta, yeah, gotta true. support so, them. I've got to be a little biased towards. Yeah, them. I get it. I get it. So, so you're saying so, right, so you know some of the players and stuff like this, but we haven't seen any of them play together. And you, you mentioned also, and I know this is very important in tournaments that playing together as a team is is really important to actually be successful in a, in a scene. So, do you expect them to be as strong as you guys in the A tier, or do you? Because I I thought of them as a, as a B tier team. Like I see the potential in in the, in the players that they have together. But we haven't seen any of it, so I am hesitant to put them in the A tier. I'm glad to put them in, in B tier, for example. I think mm, it's it's hard to say in this group because I know some of the teams um, they aren't going to be as like stiff competition as compared to um, the other the other league for sure. So I mm -hmm. think even if they don't have a lot of team cohesion right now, I think their individual play should. It should get them wins, so mm -hmm. that's why you know I think they'll fit well into the A tier. I think they'll get at least the same amount of wins as us. Yeah. All right. So um, yeah, I... if we get any wins. Yeah, yeah. That, was... That's something that's still waiting to be desired. But, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, okay, but so so you, you estimate that they might be in at least equally um, in terms of strength to you, and and that would put them in A tier already. All right, all right. I'll, I'll, I'll go with you on this one uh, because I definitely think they are... This is my list, CB. This is your list, true, but we, we are bringing this together right now. This is my list as well. Oh, <laughs> yeah, okay, it's all good. Okay, it's okay, all good. Okay. No, 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 just kidding. Um, no, but yeah, so we're trying to combine this into into one tier list right now. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Right, okay. so, so that's what we're going to do. Well, perhaps, you know, you can tell me because uh, a lot of oh, the players yeah, I yeah. do not know <laughs> very well. Oh, the apes, um, yeah. Um, yeah, so same for me. Like, most of their players are new to me as well. Um, let me let, let let me take a little look at their like at their at their place as well. Um, so bring it up for those of you who don't know. So Ape is a new team. Uh, let's go to their team list. Hang on, I got it here. Yeah. So they're from a house called Four Captivator, and I know they've been doing really well on EU one. They used to be most of them used to be on EU two, where they all still have a house, and they're they are all mostly Turkish players. Um, and I know that uh, Glatzheim, for example, one of the cast, Turkish casters, he's really, uh, really big on them, or he expects some good things from them. So D tier, I guess from what I've heard about them, maybe a bit rough. Um, but again, I don't know any of their players specifically, so we'll, you would have to get more info about them. So, but I like to be surprised and see see how good they are. For now, I. I would kind of agree with putting them into D tier, I guess, uh, or give them benefit of doubt and put them into C tier. Um, but we don't know anything about this team in terms of like strength in um, in a tournament. And the house that they're from is strong, but for example, Triarchy, one of the stronger houses on EU2, arguably, um, is has been really weak in a tournament so far, right? So it's very different um, performing in a territory war or performing in a tournament. So. That's, yeah, that's I would say I it's completely DS. different. Yeah, yeah, it is very different. Yeah, uh, might actually be one of the reasons why your team is perhaps performing so well because all you have all not played together in TW, meaning that you don't have the how do you say like the 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 habits that maybe could get in the way in the in the tournament from from a TW. Yeah, and a lot of when we first start playing um, in season zero, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> a lot of them weren't actually playing the game. This is I don't know if. Uh, if you remember, but a lot of uh, quite, quite a few of our players, they were still like green, like no runes, trying to compete against their players. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, they're a lot more active now, thankfully, but mm. um, yeah. Yeah, that definitely makes a big difference if you play against like veteran players from season one uh, compared to uh, new players from season five or six or whatever. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, uh, for now, we'll we'll stick with apes onto D tier, um, okay? Um, because they're totally new to the tournament, um, and we at least you and I don't know about their players. Maybe they are really good. I hope so. I hope they can kick into C or B tier. I hope that's for any team. But we have to make an estimation on what we know. So um, we'll put them there. Um, then 
I want to move back to the A tier. Baguette Majors, uh, they're also one of the unknown teams for the tournament. Why do you put them in A tier as well? I am biased because they are a food. I'm gonna be honest. That's, the, that's the I don't know. Any, I don't know anyone mm -hmm. on that team. All right. All right. Uh, so, <laughs> do, do you know anyone on the team? Um, so, personally, no. But I know that they are the house that Corto plays with. So he's uh, Corto is the tournament organizer for Core tournaments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and he is pretty pretty convinced that that they can they can actually perform really well. Um, I don't know any of the players personally, or I've probably played against quite a few of them on, on like cross server stages, but nothing specifically I could tell you about the house other than that Quarto is very confident in them. So I believe well, I guess he's, you know, is he's got a lot of experience watching teams. So. Yeah, true that, but it's also his own house. Um, so I'm going to put them I'm and I'm sorry, but I'm I'm going to put them down into the Oh rough. Mm. I would have to put them down into C tier, I think. All right, all yeah. right. Well, despite the I... food, and I'm going to French next, mm. like next week. Um, so, um, my French heart is hurting, um, but I, I, yeah, I, I'm afraid I just have to. Yeah, that's all right. I didn't really fit in with the the meal anyway. Yeah, all right. I mean, choc. Oh, honestly, chocolate and 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 pain in in French, it's really good. In French, they yeah, actually but put, they don't put, put, put it chocolate. inside a baguette. They do, yeah. <laughs> Not they a do. baguette. Yes, you do. You you just so for lunch, you just bring the baguette and you bring the chocolate. You eat it together. I that's I have not heard that. You you should do it. It's it's actually really nice. And then there's also the chocolate croissant, of course. Yeah, well, like there's the croissants. Yeah, but yeah. and then yeah, you can do the same with the baguette. Yeah, I mean it's it's a bit like you sh you shouldn't do it like for every meal, but uh, yeah, you you do it when you're hungry and you you need some something nice to eat. Maybe yeah. that'll be, you know, if if we win against baguette, maybe that's what I'll do. Yeah, no chocolate exactly. cake, a chocolate baguette. How about that. Yeah, if you win against them, you can still get the cake. But if you lose against them, you have to try the baguette, the the baguette and and the chocolate. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. Is is that a deal we can make? That fine. All right. Can we get a that's picture fine. or some video of it for this bet? <laughs> uh, yes. All yes. Right. Sure. Excellent. Okay. Sure. I'll, 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 ta I'll, I'll take it, I'll take it. Okay, good, good. All right, on to the next team then. Uh, Triarchy, Love and Devotion or Holy Crusaders? Uh, your call. Let's do your team, Triarchy. All right, go ahead, shoot me. <laughs> uh, okay, when we played in the official game against mm -hmm. you guys, um, I think you, you guys did pretty well in the PvP, actually, I think. Like, just when it was mostly player versus player. Mm -hmm. uh, the very first attack on the supply. Um, so that was good, because that's pretty much where all my confidence lies, is in our guys' PvP. Mm -hmm. And the fact that, you know, you guys, you, you pretty much won that. I, I was, I would say, you know, you guys have got a lot going for you in that, in that regard. I don't know. Obviously, like, your record last season was... Um, wasn't the best it, it was a bit small we we had zero wins like not, yeah not gonna run for it yeah yeah <laughs> you're pretty unlucky yep. but um i i think that's you know i i don't know all the reasons why mm -hmm. i think maybe just like some of the decision making is poor like um but that's definitely things that can be fixed yeah. so i'm gonna put them in c tier right now mm -hmm. but i don't see any reasons why they couldn't become a tier you know <laughs> At the end of the season, perhaps. Yeah, who knows? Uh, like, I definitely think being on a team as well that we are not near the level of chocolate palettes or maybe kebabs, considering the level of players that they have and the experience that their players have. Um, comparing them to the other teams that we still have left, Holy Crusaders, Love and Devotion, um, I feel like we were very similar to Holy Crusaders' level. Oh, oh, one thing yeah. I'd like to add is that mm -hmm. evidently, or I'm just going to assume, yeah. but. You guys aren't daunted by losses, and I think that is like one of the best characteristics of a team. Mm, that's like interesting. Yeah. Some teams, you know, they get one loss and they explode, mm -hmm. and they break up, never <laughs> talk to each other again. Um, but you know, Triarchy was that six, seven losses in a row, yeah, and still kicking. You know, yeah. so that's yeah, exactly. that's something you got to respect, and I think that's that is one of my favorite <clears throat> things in mm -hmm. like a team if they can just yeah. take a loss and not. 
TikTok here at all. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Oh, well, I mean, we definitely oh, did oh, yeah. care. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can tell oh, you I... that. I can tell you, we definitely did care. And, and some of the players, of course, take it harder than others. But I, I do agree. Like, in, in Trike, um we've been losing a lot of our games. But we are definitely looking to improve. And we also have, like, a strong core of players that keeps playing together, keeps trying to improve. And we get new players that want to, like, go with that as well. So I agree. For now, I would put Trike in C tier as well. Um, but I definitely feel like they can push it up uh, the moment that they finally get to really fight together and get on the same page. Because individually, I believe the players are really strong. There are some extremely good players, like, uh, for example, Lexa. He's always making very key engages, but the team just wasn't able to follow up on, on him. He has the most deaths in the whole tournament, but that's only because he's making all of these pl plays and our team just doesn't manage to catch up to him. Yeah. So that's, I was that's actually expecting the player header to have the most deaths. Yeah. Not just not not for any because I know him or anything. Mm -hmm. It's just the the nine fingers caster. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> I noticed he was calling him deader. Yeah. And so I thought, you know, this, this is a player that dies a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we... So I was looking for his name. Yeah, yeah, I got end. it. Especially the deal, but you just got to do it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. So. Yeah, but yeah, Deader wasn't it. And I guess he is also getting getting better at dodging getting killed because he gets uh, like... He's doing something. He yeah. gets I think he gets focused so much in, uh, on the games. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so that's all good. Um, all right, on to Holy Crusaders and Love and Devotion then. Tell me. I don't want. Um, we also devotion. have them in C tier. Uh, after talking about the teams, do you still agree on that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think so as well. Like, already this is pretty interesting. I, I, I agree with, with what you've done, basically. So, Juggler Palance and Kebabs clearly in the lead. Uh, Kebabs may be B tier for me, but I'll stick with you in, uh, when you say that they might be of equal level to you guys. Not having played them, obviously, but at least with what you know about the team. And then a clear divide between you two and all the other teams. Uh, yeah, that's that's what we've done here. So, why are Holy Crusaders and Love and Devotion? in the seat here as well. Love and Devotion, I are they like a Rose, pretty much? Um, has... No, Rose is, is, is the one that actually got in a fuel division, right? So I, I know Love oh, and Devotion, okay. they are a kind of a, like a sub-team for We Are Clowns, if I'm correct, perhaps. They've actually been scrimming them quite a bit. So, but they oh, okay. seem, be, seem able to translate that into a lot of wins. But they did get better throughout the season. Um, so this is one reason why I might be willing to put them into B tier because through like at the end of the season they were clearly starting to get better, got some wins. So yeah. all right, well I'll take your word on that because I don't know I don't know their their players I don't mm -hmm. think. Um, I'll I'll take a quick look at them actually. Yeah sure sure good. So um, they clearly won against Banished for example, which is the other team that got zero loss, zero wins uh, in the in the league last season. Um, they were fighting in the in, in the pool B. So, yeah, I was right. I don't know any of their players. Yeah. Um, so Love and oh, Devotion got that. Wait, I know one uh, again. Yeah, and Love and Devotion Yen also won against Sifo. So they ended yeah. up fifth, just like you, uh, but in the pool in the group B. So uh, okay, okay. So I guess like ranking them on on B tier would definitely make sense, I believe. Yeah, I I know Yen's good. Um, he's the only player I recognize. He was actually. He came over to Choco Paladin, I think, for like a couple hours the very first day and then <laughs> left. A bit, or I don't know if he, I, I, yeah, I think he did for a couple hours. <laughs> <laughs> so that's probably why they're so good, you know? They have a Chocolate Paladin. Yeah, there. that's gotta be it then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, cool. yeah so B tier, C tier? Yeah, I, I, I think we'd have to put them in, the, in, in B tier because they've been getting like two wins against two other teams in their, in, in their, in their pool last season. and. Trike and Holy Crusaders clearly weren't able to do that. So that puts them above Trike and uh, Holy Crusaders for sure. Yep. yep. That would make sense to me at least. Yep. All right, very good. Uh, let me get a couple. Uh, okay, back again. Um, okay, so looking at this tier list, uh, it's almost exactly what you got, except for putting the baguette down below. Um, because honestly, we don't know anything about them other than that Corto knows about the team. So I'll have to find out what he knows about the team and maybe we'll have mm -hmm. to put Baguette later in B or A tier. But for now, 
what we've got is A tier kebabs, chocolate paladins, B tier love and devotion, C tier triarchy, holy crusaders, and baguette munchers, and then D tier we've got apes because we don't know anything about them. They might be C, B, A. Who knows? We'll find out through. I don't think we've season. discussed holy crusaders yet. Oh yeah, true. All right, go into it. Yeah. Well, I feel like we have in a way that saying that. Um, you talked about the team being way below you in terms of the scrims, right? And then also, what else is there to know? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, what no. else is there to know? No, right? it, talk- oh, there is God. a gap between uh, Pondegard and you, so that's why you're in different divisions. And then if you are the A tier, they, they cannot be in the B tier. No, no, this kidding. But um, I feel like Holy Crusaders and Triarchy, we played against Holy Crusaders, they won against Triarchy. Um, so that could put them above Triarchy, but not by that much. I feel like those two teams were pretty. Um, like equal in terms of the strength, I, at least that's, that's what I felt like during the match. Um, yeah, and I, def- I, I definitely would have put them with love and devotion. That's also something that I would say. I think there is a few changes happening. Mm. One of them I can see is that there is an old player that was retired. He's called uh, Prophecy. Mm-hmm. Um, he was actually my shot caller, like when I was still sort of getting adjusted to the game, and he's a very um passionate player let's say so i think he <laughs> he'll energize um holy crusaders hopefully and i think zelge is also i saw him he was a shot caller mm-hmm. in one of their scrims against us so i don't know if that's just for fun or if he's actually going to be doing that so he's also another um high energy shot caller so yeah I think, for sure yeah i think either way their games will be like fast paced and that's kind of like how i like to yeah, that's how I like to play pretty much. Mm-hmm. So maybe yeah, we'll have similar styles. It, it, that is some very interesting insight that you have into the team uh, changes that might be happening. Um, yeah. So so for you that that gives them like another that gives another perspective for you at least on the strength of the team. But does that mean that you would even be willing to put them into B tier above Triarchy, for example? Well, the thing was, I was actually kind of scared of losing to them. Um, when we scrimmed, because I, you know, my my opinion isn't low of them, Mm -hmm. but after we played against them, the, my my fears got put to rest, unfortunately. I mean, Mm -hmm. (laughs) maybe it was just like we got really lucky, but if, you know, that continues, like that sort of game that they played, um, yeah, I I, I think C tier, I, I gotta say C tier. But hopefully they improve. And I know they have got a bunch of good players as well um, I'm friends with. So, yep. Hopefully I'll see them in an eight year soon. Yeah, exactly. Um, but hopefully not above you if you if you want to go to field division. Oh, check and place also got you there. But yeah, uh, I definitely hope that they improve. Um, seems like they are definitely a team I mean, that, if they change their name to like Carmel hard. Crusaders, I could definitely, you know, you'll be able to <clears> share yeah. top two. Exactly. Then it's fine, right? Yeah. But. Um, we we gotta watch out here because if there's too many like food teams, then then the, like the competition becomes really really big. Well, but... this is how you get sponsors, CB. Mm-hmm. I see. This what is how you're you get saying. sponsors. Yeah, this is this is a great idea. All right, let, let's get more food into the zebra rifles. Uh, maybe we should. Oh. Maybe oh, okay. actually, this this makes sense now. The rustic division is all about the farmers, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Um, what we what have we got here? We've got kebab, we've got chocolate, and we've got a baguette. Well, I'm thinking the. Farmers of the medieval period were probably weren't making those, you know, chocolates and kebabs or maybe kebabs. I don't know how old that is. Yeah. Pro- we need like a potato team, maybe like a carrot team. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure they, they were making baguettes way back uh, in French for sure, like for a really long time. Chocolate, I'm not so sure about, although chocolate is also pretty old. If you go uh, actually, yeah, it, chocolate yeah. is uh, it's, it's, it's been around yeah. ancient. Yeah, <laughs> so never mind. Yeah, yeah, never mind. yeah maybe, so... maybe they did. <laughs> and and I know that kebab is like like one of the things that they were making since forever. All Turkey, right, forget so. everything I said. Yeah. I'm wrong. Uh, yeah. What are you saying okay. here, man? <laughs> no, it's all good. All right, um, eating apes not recommended. I think not in most cultures, at least, and not in mine. Um, Holy yep. Crusaders, yeah, um, they've definitely they're definitely eating something, so that's for sure. Um, but uh, nothing specifically about food. Love and devotion is just about bringing it together, right? The whole food. I, I just yeah you just gotta love the food you gotta devote yourself to making great you're food, definitely great like food. Yeah. really stretching it here <laughs> yeah, I know. all right 
we're, we're skipping this one again. Um, all right, we got the tier list. Um, I'm pretty happy we had. Do you agree with this one that we got so far? Like you have to make some changes in yours, but no, no, it looks looks good. Yeah, looks good. Right. Time will tell. Something we can work with, I think. We'll see how it evolves over the season. Uh, that will be really interesting. Um, it will start on May 29, and then it will run for seven weeks, and we'll see who is the victor after all of that. So mm -hmm. that's going to be good. Um, anything you would like to say, like closing words, uh, shout out to, to anyone? No, just uh, I'll I'll definitely try and pre-order like a special kick for this in that week seven, I think. Uh, that would be nice. Yeah, I yep. look forward to it. <laughs> if, if you see any chance to send it to me, uh, just try it. I don't care how it You know what? I'll, I'll put it in the general chat or something. Oh, yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> all right um yeah that's it for us then uh, guys um i hope you had fun with this podcast and the tier list as well uh, i look very much forward to seeing uh, all your reactions into the general chat in discord um let's see if we can get some funny discussions going there um do not blame J blake for putting you into d tier or c tier or b tier because that was also on me uh, and we're just trying to to get this going um, well, you banned me from the S tier, so... Yeah, that's true, that's true. Like, I would have maybe put them in there, I don't know. I, I think you might have put everyone in the S tier, if I'm honest. Yeah, so it could have happened. Luckily, we got this one. I'm pretty, I'm pretty content with this. Um, it, like we said, it might be totally upside down after two weeks of playing the season. But this is what we got currently. Um, so have fun with it. And uh, I hope to see you next week when we have the Feudal Division. We'll talk about it with Heather and also Simone, uh, two of the Jacked Ultras players. Uh, so that will be a lot of fun. Like you mentioned, Heather is also better. Uh, so we will see how he likes that joke, uh, being actually like the victim of it or part of it. Um, so we'll see about it next week. Um, hope you have fun playing Conquest Blade and definitely come and watch CB Rifles next season. Thank you, Blake, once again. Uh, see you You're on welcome. the battlefield. You too. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Bye.